Welcome to Indiana News Desk. I'm Joe Wren. Governor Eric Holcomb's recently released infrastructure plan includes $100 million for rural broadband. Those dollars could incentivize Internet providers to expand broadband to areas that may have been left out. My colleague Brock Turner joins us now with more. Brock. Thanks, Joe. When the governor announced his $1 billion infrastructure plan, most people were talking about I-69's advanced completion date. While getting telecom companies to run high-speed internet from rural areas doesn't sound like finishing I-69, it could carry very similar economic benefits. Estimates put the number of Hoosiers without a reliable internet connection at 93,000. That's about one out of every 10 Hoosiers living in rural counties. Among them is Shea Keller. I think like internet is just becoming bigger and bigger and everything is on the internet now. She's a senior at Brown County High School. Every student here gets a laptop through a new initiative designed to prepare kids for the 21st century. The issue Shea faces is how to get her work done when she's at home, where she doesn't have a reliable internet connection. Usually I have to travel to either my grandparents' house down the road or my uncle's house. And if their internet is down, then I travel to Van Buren Elementary, which is just down the road, like five minutes away, and I'll sit in the parking lot and do homework. Lieutenant Governor Suzanne Crouch debuted a map this summer outlining broadband coverage across the state. It painted a clearer picture on where coverage gaps exist, but it's not entirely accurate. Broadband maps rely on data carriers to self-report. All carriers in Indiana have their own territory to cover. Within that territory can be a number of census blocks. In densely populated areas, the census blocks are small. In rural areas, they tend to be much larger. That can cause discrepancies in coverage. Carriers usually mark an entire block as having coverage, even when some customers in the block don't. Right now, it's not that we're shooting in the dark, but we're kind of uh, don't have accurate data, and it's, and it's hard to validate that data. So I hope that the next step uh, is, okay, let the providers continue to report that. That's at the federal level, but at the state level, let's validate that data. But industry leaders say access is only part of the problem. The other consideration is adoption. Indiana Broadband and Technology Association President John Coppin says in a lot of places where broadband is available, adoption is poor. It does not reward a provider to spend $30,000, $35,000 per mile to lay fiber uh, when they're counting on uh, a take rate of 50% to get 10% uh, because now they have stranded investment. Building that last mile is important. Without it, many Hoosiers in rural areas are left without service. But it's expensive. Costs per mile of fiber can vary anywhere from $35,000 to well over $50,000 when geography presents a challenge. In areas like these, crews have to string fiber cable through dense forests. If the expected adoption rate isn't achieved, providers could lose millions. Dave Broden is the COO at Smithville Fiber. The company's territory includes a lot of rural areas. He's hopeful Smithville can take advantage of the state's grant program, but in the past, he says, incentive programs haven't been worth the additional regulatory costs. You had to compare maybe the hoops you have to jump through to do the grant versus funding it ourselves, and so we ended up just continuing to fund the builds ourselves. That's why the lieutenant governor and Indiana's new director of broadband opportunities are working together with industry leaders and state agencies to plan how the $100 million will be disseminated and when. If we expect by the fourth quarter to be able to have that grant program in place so that then providers can go ahead and start looking at how they are going to expand broadband throughout rural Indiana. Crouch believes an answer and faster speeds are on the horizon soon. One possible vehicle for expanding internet coverage is rural electric cooperatives. They were formed about 75 years ago to bring electricity to rural America. In Indiana, they now serve more than 1.3 million Hoosiers. Many of them are looking at the future and thinking how they can have a similar success with the internet. Bowers estimates REMCs have already invested $300 million in broadband infrastructure. The cooperative is, is typically going to try to pro provide the service to all of their members or make it available to all of their members. Um, you know, so that creates a different dynamic um, as opposed to just being able to identify a specific area and going, okay, we're going to offer to this and because it makes sense as it relates to the return on the investment. SCI REMC, which serves a large portion of Brown County, is doing just that. 
the co-op is building a network that will take fiber to the last mile. It's an $80 million investment that could finally help Shay access the internet from her home. In the meantime, she has to continue with her routine. While the lack of internet at present is a challenge, it's all she's ever known. Once you get used to it, it becomes a lot easier. And it, be, it makes me a better student because I can, you know, really rely on myself that way. For Indiana News Desk, I'm Brock Turner. Joe, this is a bundle of fiber optic lines. They hang, from, they hang these from existing power lines, and just one, one of these small cables can carry 100 gigabytes of data per second. So if they can get fiber infrastructure in place, it could serve communities well into the future. All right, Brock, great report. Thank you very much. Thank you.